And in my dream, I, I kind of shook my head. I said, what? And this voice said, do you believe your son can walk through the fire and not be burned? And I said, yes, I believe it. And this voice spoke to me and said, well, then I will rescue your son. And then I woke up. And I never had another brownie dream after that. That was years ago. So now we got to fast forward about 15 years. And I don't need to go into the details, but my wife and I went through a lot of painful time with our, with our son. And, um, and one night laying in bed, I, I would, my, my prayer was, God, keep him alive. Because if he's alive, there's hope. And I know there's many nights that my wife probably put in bed crying. And many nights, sleepless nights. And laying in bed one night, all of a sudden I was reminded, do you believe your son to go off the fire? So now they burn. And laying in bed that night, I said, yes. I believe it. And he said, well, I will rescue your son. And the point of that story is vision is so important. When God speaks a word to us, it is so important to grab hold of that word and to believe it with everything that we have. Because a day will come when that may be the only thing that we have to go on is what the Lord spoke to us. It may have been years ago, but it's the thing that we have to go on. I, I, I'm on this new thing now, praying between the cracks, is what the Lord spoke about two weeks ago. I want you to pray between the cracks. And to relate that with what I just told you, in my bed that night, when the Lord said, Do you believe your son can walk through the fire and not be burned? In that moment, there was a glimmer of hope. And as I recognized that glimmer of hope, man, I prayed for that crack of hope. And I said, expand the situation, God. Expand your life into the situation. But I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wouldn't have remembered or if God would remind me of the vision that he gave me. My son was just a small child. So vision is so important. Whenever God speaks to us, it's so important to take hold of that. Are we on the same page? Yes. Yeah. It's so important. So that's one thing I would like you to take from here today is pray through the cracks. Pray through that crack of hope. It may be a family member. It may be a situation. It might be whatever it is. If God gives you a vision for that, man, just, just pray that through. So we're going to keep it real simple. I got my glass on hold. We're going to keep it real simple today. And we're going to start off in 2 Corinthians 5 7. My tendency is to um, go crazy and read the whole chapter and just get into it. But I can't do that this morning. There's just one verse that I want to read. 2 Corinthians 5 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And it is so important, to church, that we walk by faith and not by sight. God is doing things in the heavenly. And as children of God, we are seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ Jesus. Amen. Even though we live in these earthly bodies, our home isn't on earth, it's in heaven. And it's so important to keep, to keep focused on that, that we walk by faith and not by sight. Because if we walk by sight, our eyes are going to deceive us. If we don't have a vision from heaven, if we don't realize that our home is in heaven, Amen. we're going to struggle here on earth. Because there's a lot of disappointments on earth. There's a lot of things happening in our world that is just upside down. Walk by faith and not by sight. Grab hold of that vision. Grab hold of what Christ says about you as an individual and how that is connected to the economy of heaven and walk in that. 
But like I said, I'm going to just allow me to connect to the prayer here. So in prayer, it's important to walk by faith, not by sight. Because if you pray those things through by faith, even though our eye doesn't see it, the Lord has spoke to us, and by faith, we move in that direction. Real, real quick, does, does anyone, um, does, that, does that work just hit anybody? Is that, could you please stand? Could you stand? So, Father, right now in your precious name, we pray that these two ladies, God, will walk by faith and not by sight. That you will place into them faith that is beyond comprehension, God. That the things that you speak to them, Father, they will grab a hold of it and they will run with all that they're worth. And that they will believe it. They will say yes and amen to every promise and every word that you speak to them, Father. We ask right now that an abundance of faith would land on these two ladies. That it would go deep into their spirits, God. And no matter what the situation, Father, I pray that that faith would grow like a seed into a beautiful tree. And the fruit from that faith would explode in the situations that they're in, the situations that they're praying for. So Holy Spirit, right now we ask that you would do a complete work of faith by your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank God. Second thing that we're going to look at, we're going to move quickly through this stuff, so the second thing we're going to look at is in uh, Zechariah. Zechariah 4, 6. And again, I would encourage you to, to read Zechariah 3 and 4. It's a beautiful depiction of Christ being the head. And it's just a wonderful story. And I would love to get into that, but I can't. So we're just going to read one verse. Maybe two. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. I think that's how you say that name. Saying, Not by might, nor by power, but, but, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, Who art thou, O great mountain, before Sir Gubala, or whatever that name is, that shall become a flame? And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Not by might, and not by power, but by what? By my spirit, says the Lord. You know, in the Greek, it says, not by armies, and not by the power of men, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So as we walk by faith and not by sight, we start to recognize that it's not of our own doing, but it's the spirit of God in us, completely removing ourselves from the picture of God. And trusting that God is who he says he is in his people, in you and I. <clears throat> because a lot of times as human beings, we put our hands to the things that are our obstacles, and we do a mess of it. And God is saying, wait a minute, I have another way planned for you. I have another way planned. So it's not by might, not by power. By your spirit, says the Lord. Real quick, does, he, does, does that hit anybody? <clears throat> that verse. Go ahead and stand up. Could you stand up, please? So, Father, again, we say yes and amen to your words, Father. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, O oh God. That as your people, Father, we would learn to trust in your spirit. 
We would walk hand in hand. We would follow and obey everything that you speak to us, God, because we know by your spirit you have called us forth into this world because you want to change the environment that we live in by your spirit. Father, we can't do it on our own. I ask right now that supernaturally you would embed this into the hearts of your people, God, the ones that are standing especially, that they would surrender before you, O oh God. Show them, Father, that the height of obedience is simply to surrender before your feet. Father, manifest yourself in them, that mighty warrior, the one that can do all things. And God, I pray for these ones standing up right here that they will not walk in condemnation, Father. But they'll walk in freedom of knowing who they are in you and who you are in them. Amen. That, Father, they won't walk by sight, but they'll walk by faith. And they'll know that it's not because of them. It's not by mind or power, but it's your spirit. Thus say to the Lord, it's your spirit. And we say yes and amen to that, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're doing things a little differently this morning. Is that okay? These were tough lessons for my, my wife and I to, to learn. And um, I am so thankful, though, that, that we had to walk through some of the things that we walked through to come to this understanding because through these things we're talking about this morning there is so much freedom there is so much liberty I would I would never want to go back to Egypt you know what I mean I mean I feel like we have faced the, the Red Sea and we stood there and we're like God what, what do we do I mean there's an ocean in front of us how do we cross this ocean it's like the Lord spoke. Not by faith and not by sight. You see an ocean. I see a clearing. I see dry land. And it's not by mind, not by power, but by, by, by my spirit. It's by my spirit. And as I, as I started just like sunk in there, and I started praying that, I pray this stuff all the time. And he's, even as I, I'm speaking it right now, it's going out of my mouth. It's going back into my ears. It's settling in my heart even more. It's like, man, we think we're really something else as people, don't we? <laughs> I don't think we're that great. It's only by the Spirit of God that, that causes greatness in us. You know? uh, the next one is uh, Psalms 68. One. And I'm actually going to read all the way through four on this because I love it so much. It says, Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that bragged upon the heavens by his name God, and rejoice before him. But God arise, and let his enemies be scattered. Oh, Father, that we would pray this prayer over our lives continually. Because by faith, we walk this thing out called walking in the Spirit. And in walking in the Spirit, we can boldly go into the throne room before God and say, Oh, God, arise in my life and let the enemies be scattered. I wish I would have known this stuff years ago. And I'm not saying that we don't know it. 
but knowing it and knowing it is two different things. I can know it, but I don't know it. But when I know it with my heart, it goes to my feet and I begin walking it out. Big difference. So real quick, let God arise and the enemies be scattered. Does that speak to anybody? Go ahead and scatter up again. Let's, let's not be shy. Man. This is church. We're a family here. This is what this is all about, right? Yeah. This is what this is all about, man. I, I really believe that this morning God is depositing things within his people. I have been excited for this morning. Because I believe that, that God is on the move in this church. The Lord spoke to me not too long ago and said, I've got to turn things upside down for them to be right side up. And I know in my own life I have walked upside down for so long that I thought it was right side up. But when my life got turned upside down, I realized, wow. Things aren't right side up. So Holy Spirit come in and do the work in me. I remember Gaylord when he spoke up here, he, he talked how it feels like the Holy Spirit took him and shook him upside down and shook everything out of his pockets. Remember him saying that? That had to happen for Gaylord to be right side up. Does that make sense? So Father, over these people that are standing right now, I pray that you would arise in them, that you would cause a strength in me to come into their body, into their bones, into their spirit, God, and that they would rise up and be counted. Be those ones that you call them to be. That in their lives, Father, the enemies would be scattered because you, O oh God, are the great warrior. And it's not by might or power, but it's by your spirit. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just, just engulf these people right now that are standing, God. They're standing saying, yes, Lord. They are saying yes, Lord, to your word. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. So, Father, I pray that you would do a deep work. That you would dredge within these people, God. That you would go deep into their spirits. And that the root of the cross would start to grow up in them. In me. In us as a people, God. And that resurrection power of Jesus Christ will take hold, Father. Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. In Jesus' name, we take all of this, Father, and we wrap it up in the name of your Son, Jesus, and we present it before the altar of the throne, and we say yes in our lives. We say yes, God. Amen. Amen. We've got just one more thing. You know, we're going to, I don't know what we're going to do, to be honest with you. But it's okay, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is what we're talking about this morning. I feel like this office sermon of prayer. I mean, it's so important as we go into prayer to have these concepts and mindsets. Because as a church, man, we have been. We have been called. It says that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need a heavenly perspective. Amen. And we need to walk in that as his people. Amen. Amen. And I believe that, that the heavens are moved by the prayers of the saints. Doesn't matter if there's a little crack. We need to pray through that crap. And let the light of Jesus Christ expand it. And have the kingdom be ushered in in the situation. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we're, we're, we're getting a little more honest now. This uh, thing I want to read right now, I really believe the Lord laid this on my heart. And uh, I want to change what I just said. The Lord laid this on my heart. I don't have to really believe it as a human being. I know that he did. So um, I won't qualify. I'll just say the Lord laid this on my heart. 
And um, I could, uh, I'm just going to ask, uh, who do we have in here that feel like God has called them to intercession? So let me read this real quick. This is that Joshua. I want to read Joshua 5, uh, 14 and 15, and then a little bit of 6. And I want you to listen to, to what this is. And he said, um, let's see, let me go 13. It came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said to him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place where thou standest is holy. And Joshua did so. That section right there where it says, uh, Loose thy shoes off thy foot. Uh, some would interpret that, and I got it written here. Uh, remove, remove from thee such thoughts that thou shalt take this city by strength. And why is that? Because it's not by my nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Moving on to uh, at the last there, and it says, this place where you stand is holy, and Joshua did so. And as he took off his shoes, he was taking off his shoes in willing obedience and saying, I surrender to what you say, God, to the Lord of the host. I take my shoes off and I surrender to what you're saying. This is important for the intercessors. Now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Because the mighty men of valor is no competition for the Lord God of Israel. And he shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day he shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Joshua heard the voice of the Lord, and he had a vision of what the Lord of hosts spoke to him, and he tarried in that vision. The depth of the vision is, the, is, is a sign of how far we go in that vision. The distance that we walk. Does that make sense? And for Joshua, he did everything that the Lord spoke to him about doing. And he carried it through to the end. And at the end, they let out a great shout. Even though the walls hadn't came down yet, the shout they let out was a shout of victory as if a battle had already been won. And when that happened, the walls came down. For you intercessors, it is so important that when the Father speaks to us and he gives us that vision, 
that we carry that vision through to the end. I don't care if it's 15 years. We pray that vision through. And we keep letting up that shout because we know that God is going to be victorious in the thing that he's told us about. And for you that aren't standing, you prayer people, it is our job to partner and stand behind the intercessors that are filling that gap in the wall. And that you pray for them. Prayer is so important to what God is doing in our time and in this church right here. That 9 to 10 hour is so important for the intercessors to show up as a band of people and pray in unity of the Spirit concerning what the Lord has shown them. And keep praying. And keep praying, no matter what the results are, because we walk by faith and not by sight, because the Lord has given us a word. And because He gave us that word, we know that it's not by might or power, but it's by His Spirit. And because it's by His Spirit, we can say, let God arise and let the enemies be scattered. Amen? Amen. So, Father, for these people that are standing right now, the intercessors, God, I pray that you would just give them a double portion. That you would fill them with your might. That you would fill them with holy endurance to go the distance, God. I pray that on our knees would be common. It would be the common thing that we do. We'd be on our knees seeking you, O oh God, and saying, what do you have for us? Let God arise and the enemies be scattered. It doesn't matter what the situation is, God. You have spoken a word to us, and we believe that word, and we are going to be faithful in our prayers toward heaven because we know, God, that you answer the prayers. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just inundate us this morning. And that life would come. That abundant life would come, Father. And just flood our spirits. Flood the inner man. I pray that we leave this place this morning changed people. Every one of us. That we won't look at things the same. We won't walk the same. We won't talk the same. But we'll take on the characteristics of you, O oh God, by your Son, Jesus Christ, that will allow His Spirit, that resurrection power of your Son, to inundate us as people, and that we would walk as the living testimonies that you've called us to be, that your light would come to this darkened world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, I think what we're going to do right now, we've got like 15 minutes left.